Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of End Time Prophecy where we're seeking to give you a basic understanding of end time things as is revealed from God's Word. So now we're going to be looking at Daniel's 70th week. Uh, this is a great prophecy that's found in the book of Daniel chapter 9. It's verses 24 to 27. That's mainly where we'll be tonight but this is such a key uh, prophetic insight into the things that will happen in the last days. And actually you'll see that it's just in these four verses, these four short verses, that quite a long period of time is covered. And actually you'll find one of the most amazing prophecies and prophetic fulfillment given within these verses. If you don't know nothing about this, then uh, tonight, again, we're just giving you a basic understanding. Uh, but these verses uh, will just blow you away what God has revealed to us in them. Now... The book of Daniel was written around 600 BC, maybe a little bit more than that. And God gives Daniel a clear timeline of things that will happen uh, to the Jewish nation throughout the years which are to follow. So this is what it says, first of all, then. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. Please follow along with me in your Bibles. Hopefully you've got pen and paper just to jot some of these things down um, so that you're able to go into further study if you're required to do so. But this is what it says then. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. It says, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to bring reconciliation for iniquity, to bring an everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore the build of Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. There shall be built again, and the wall even in troublesome time. And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, the end of it shall be with a flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. So tonight then, just to uh, make this easy to understand for you, we'll break it up into three sections. We'll see the prophetic times that are given, we'll see the prophetic people that's given, and we'll see the prophetic fulfilment of what is given as well. So it starts then in verse 24, and it talks about 70 weeks that are determined. 70 weeks. Now if you look into the Hebrew there and you do a study of the term weeks, you'll understand that the weeks is not a week as we would know it, a week of days, but actually it's speaking of a, a week of years. So this is 70 weeks or 70 weeks of years, so that's 70 times 7. Of course 7 times 7 is the number of 490. And God is giving this time period of 490 years of uh, a prophetic picture of what he is going to do. Uh, amongst the nation of Israel. And of course, we know that actually much of these years have already been fulfilled. In fact, we'll see that 69 weeks of years have been, already been fulfilled, but there's still one week of years yet to be fulfilled. That's one week of seven-year period where God is going to uh, work through the Jewish nation. And we'll also know and understand that this seven-year period is the period of the tribulation which last seven years on earth but before we get into that this evening i want us just to understand that the bible talks then about these other weeks of years these 69 weeks of years that have already taken place uh, took place in two parts first there was a, a seven week of years uh, that's seven times seven which is 49 year period which is known as the time of troubles where the rebuilding of jerusalem was to take place see daniel was in captivity jerusalem has been been pulled down but god is giving a prophetic picture saying that the walls of jerusalem uh, will be rebuilt and when that time starts it's going to start this period of 49 years 
And after the 49 years of what the scripture calls here, that time of troubles where they were building the, the wall, they were rebuilding Jerusalem, but it was very troublesome times for the Jews. Uh, then there would be another uh, period of years, which is 62 weeks, which you can find there again in verse 25 if you follow it. So the 70, uh, the seven weeks, which equals 49 years, and the 62 weeks, which equals 434 years, will end after the Prince, uh, Messiah, has come. And actually, the, the Messiah is cut off. Now, something, if you don't already know about this, something that will blow you away is that, that we can actually work out the times, and scholars have done this effectively. And, and just to sum it up for you, basically, from when this time period started to when it ended, exactly to the day when it speaks about this time period ending when Messiah is cut off, is the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. See, we can know when the time period starts, because Daniel the prophet said this time period will start when the decree is given uh, for Jerusalem to be built again. And we know exactly when this uh, took place, because in Nehemiah it tells us that King Artaxus was the one that gave permission to Nehemiah and made a decree that Jerusalem could be rebuilt again. And actually, if you look in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 1, it says in the 20th year of his reign and in the month of Nisan, which is our month March, did the king give this decree. So, so the Bible uh, and history gives us a, a, an exact uh, period of time, an exact day when that decree was given. So we know the exact day of when this time period started. And I've said before, you know, scholars have worked out through the Jewish calendar uh, being uh, 360 day um, years that, that if you work it out to the day, it was the day Messiah was cut off the day that Jesus went in to Jerusalem. Now it's interesting as well because it calls him uh, Messiah the Prince and Messiah the Prince was a Jewish term for uh, the kingly authority of the Messiah and we know that as Jesus rode into Jerusalem uh, that day upon a donkey, uh, the prophet said behold, uh, here comes your king riding upon a donkey. And this is what it says in uh, Luke chapter 19 and verses 38 first of all. It says, uh, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I mean this is an exact uh, fulfillment of what Daniel saying that when this time will come to an end is when the, the prince of Messiah uh, it comes in. And then, this is what it says as well, Jesus himself in verse 42 of that passage, is saying to them, if you had known, even you, especially in this day, the things that make for your peace, uh, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Jesus is saying, if you guys, this crowd that gathered, Jerusalem, the nation of Israel, if you knew what was taking place before your eyes in this very day, if you knew the prophetic picture that was being fulfilled, you know, it would be great things to your eyes. But even now, uh, this has been hidden to you. So this was the 69th uh, year uh, coming to an end, that 69th period, uh, with Messiah being cut off. Of course, the Jews there were rejecting their Messiah. Jesus was coming in as king, riding into the city, uh, you know, bringing salvation, but they rejected him. Uh, and on the whole, they rejected the gospel message, and that put an end to that time period. Of course, after they rejected the message, the message then would go out to the whole world. See, just after they rejected him, uh, just uh, a week later, their king, uh, the king of Israel would be crucified upon a cross. In fact, Pilate had a subscription put upon his uh, cross as Jesus hung there uh, and bled uh, in front of Jerusalem as Jews uh, from all over Israel had gathered for the Passover. They saw this sign and they saw him hanging there and he said, this is the king of the Jews. They'd rejected him, uh, they'd crucified him. Uh, of course, this was in the plan of God. This was the very reason that he came. Jesus said, no one takes my life, I willingly lay down my life, but here he was, the rejected king of Israel. And of course, Messiah was cut off, and that put an end to that time period of God dealing with the Jews. Of course, that 69-year season leaves one week of years yet to be fulfilled, uh, to make it 70 weeks. 
and that is uh, still to be fulfilled in the future. Right now we're in a gap period, a period between the 69th year, uh, set of weeks and the 70th week of years, and of course this is the time of the church. You know, this is something that's hidden in the Old Testament, but actually is quite clearly seen in many, many scriptures. Not got time to go through them all tonight, but one of such is Isaiah uh, 62, where it talks about, um, you know, uh, the, the year of Jubilee. This is the acceptable year of the, the Lord. This is the year of salvation. And then it goes straight into talking about that, that, that great and terrible day of the Lord. You know, there's always a, you know, we see that quick switch and it can cause some confusion how it's going from these wonderful blessings into this great and terrible time of the day of the Lord. And of course, all of this uh, takes place at the same, in the same period, if you like, talking about the last days of when Jesus has come. We're in this, this gap year, uh, this time of grace, this age of the church where God is at work, you know, saving people. Uh, but you know, this time is this gap year is going to come to an end, and we spoke last time about the rapture. You know, we believe that uh, God is going to close this gap year with this time of the church by taking the church out, and then He's going to resume what He's doing with Israel. See, God's prophetic clock has stopped with Israel on that 69th year when Messiah was cut off, but it will start again at the start of the tribulation. This one week of years that is yet to be fulfilled. Hopefully that is that is clear. I've tried to put that in a nutshell for you. Hopefully that's clear. But as I say, you know, get into the scriptures, look and see what it's saying. Basically these 70 years of Daniel are to be fulfilled in three time periods. First, a seven week of years, then um, a 62 week of years, which totals 69, which has already been fulfilled, and one last week of years, which yet we're looking to, which will take place during the tribulation. But just a phenomenal uh, prophetic picture there of what God has done to the, to the exact day of Jesus riding into Jerusalem. And we know if that all of that could be fulfilled to the exact day and time and season that God has said before, we know what is coming will also be fulfilled um, to the letter in days, times and seasons. So we see these prophetic times then that's given in, in this passage. And of course understanding this will help us understand more clearly the things that are going to take place in the last days. And it helps us to understand really clearly as well going forward the things in which the book of Revelation is speaking about too. But we see these prophetic times in the passage. But also as well we see the prophetic people. And this is really uh, important to help us understand end times and uh, the, the things that God is doing with his people. See, in verse 45, as Daniel speaks, uh, sorry, in verse 25, as Daniel speaks about these 70 years that are determined, that, uh, sorry, these 70 weeks, that it, uh, it, he's speaking to your people, Daniel's people, that's the people of Israel, and he's speaking about your city, that is the city of Jerusalem. God's making it quite clear then that this plan is for him. See the 69 years that were prior were completely to do with the Jewish nation. Uh, this gap year time that we're in now is specifically to do with the church. But when the, the time of the church is done, when this age is over, God takes the church out of the picture. Then this last week of years is just specifically to deal with the Jewish nation. Of course we know this is something that takes place because we see the lack of the church in the book of Revelation. In fact, from uh, Revelation chapter 4 to Revelation 18, you cannot find the church because the church has been taken out of the picture. And again, God is dealing specifically with the Jewish nations. Of course, the great the time of tribulation or the great tribulation that we know that's coming, Jesus said this earth has never seen a time like what is coming as God begins to pour out uh, judgment upon the earth and upon the nations. And of course, the tribulation has many different names throughout the Bible, uh, but one of these in Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 is a time known as Jacob's trouble. This is Jacob's trouble. Yes, it's going to be judgments upon the earth, but it's Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Jacob is Israel. It's known as Israel's trouble. It's not the church's trouble. You know, Jesus has promised to take the church out of those things. This, these last seven years specifically 
are dealing uh, with God's people. They're the prophetic uh, people. It's important that we understand that. Otherwise, we're not going to understand what God is doing in the earth right now and what he's going to do in the last days. So we see these uh, prophetic times. We see the prophetic people. And then through uh, this 70th, 70th week that Daniel is speaking about, we'll see prophetic fulfillment. Now in verse 27 we see that this prophetic week of years that is yet to be fulfilled will start with a covenant, covenant being made with one who is called the Prince to come. So we had a Prince, the Messiah Prince that came and then it talks about a Prince that is to come. And don't get these two mixed up because these two are completely different. One is Christ, the Prince that came, but the Prince that is to come uh, is the Antichrist. And it says that he will make a covenant which will start this week of years, um, this, this last week of years which is yet to be fulfilled. We know him as the Antichrist. Daniel calls him the prince which is to come. Uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, he's called the man of sin which is to be uh, revealed. And in Revelation 13, he calls him the beast out of the sea. And of course, as we get deeper into the things that will take place in the tribulation and the other Bible verses, it makes it quite clear uh, that this time period will start when Antichrist comes and he makes peace uh, in Israel. Of course, we know that there has never been peace in Israel. We know that there will never be peace in Israel or in Jerusalem until Jesus comes back. And that's why the Bible says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's something that we're, we're to do. You know, it's been tried time and time again over the years for peace to be made uh, in the Middle East. There will never be peace. There will never be peace. In fact, in Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3, it says, When they say peace and safety, uh, uh, you know, take heed because it's a sign that destruction is coming. So when they say peace, it may look like peace, but it's just a temporary peace. It's a false peace because we know that in the middle of this uh, last seven years, although it will start with a time of peace and a covenant made with the people of Israel, then halfway through that that covenant will be broken and great destruction will, will come upon the earth. In fact, in this time of peace, this false peace, that uh, worship will be restored in the temple, you know, the Jews will be able to sacrifice again, but halfway through the covenant's going to be broken, uh, their means of sacrifice, as we've just read in that prophetic passage, is going to be taken away. And in fact, it talks about an abomination of desolation. Jesus pulls this out in Matthew 24 when he's talking about these events, which actually, as you look into it, it what's going to take place is there's going to be an abominable sacrifice taking place in the temple, which will uh, more than likely be the sacrifice of a pig, which will be the ultimate blasphemy. Uh, but this is going to take place uh, in these last days. So we have a clear picture of these things taking place and it's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be a good time of great tribulation upon the earth and for the Jewish nation. Uh, but in it all, it's not hopeless, it's hopeful that God is working his plan out. And all the wonderful promises that he's made to Israel, he's not a man that he should lie. Those things that he's said will come to pass. He is not finished with his people. God has not forgotten his people. And actually the fulfillment of this prophecy is going to bring in great blessing. Something that we uh, see time and time again. And something that we read very clearly in verse 24, which we started with. So six great blessings are going to come about to the Jewish nation as a result of this prophecy being fulfilled. But number one, uh, you can follow this in verse 24 if you want. Number one is to finish uh, transgression. So this, this time of prophetic fulfillment is going to finish uh, transgression. Of course, we know that Jesus made an end to transgression upon the cross. But this is something that the Jewish nation on the whole uh, rejected. They rejected uh, him, um, the, 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 who God had made the chief cornerstone. But Zechariah says in uh, Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, if you want to turn there, Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, it says, Chapter 12 and verse 10, it says, And I will pour 
on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for their first born. So the Bible saying there that those that, that rejected him, there is coming a day when they will look upon him. They will look upon him who they pierced, the one who has put an end to transgression. And in that day there will be a great time of repentance. And in that day there will be a great time of reconciliation as they look upon him who they pierced. There will be this great uh, time of reconciliation as God puts an end to transgression and sin. Just as he does to all those that look upon him and receive the wonderful forgiveness that, that he offers. Of course to those that do, those of us that already have and those that can even now, we have this wonderful revelation of who he is. As we look upon him, the one that puts an end to transgression, it says as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he's removed our transgression from us. What a wonderful uh, saviour is uh, to Jesus. But to those that call upon his name for salvation in this day, the day of salvation, uh, the Jewish nation who have rejected him up until now, in that day uh, they will look upon him who they have pierced and that he will put an end to their transgression uh, through uh, repentance and reconciliation. The second blessing that the uh, Jewish nation will receive in that day is that he will put an end to their sin. He's going to put an end to sin. See, ever since the fall of man, ever since Adam sinned and sin came into this world, uh, sin has been a prominent thing. Sin has been an enemy of mankind. And sin and wickedness uh, just seem to go on and to abound in this world and also in the Jewish nation. Even right throughout history, right throughout the tribulation period, we're going to see sin upon sin upon sin. Uh, but in that day, when Jesus returns, he's going to put an end to sin, uh, that sin will reign no more. And this is what Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 23 says about that day. It says, they shall not defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgression. But I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. What a wonderful day that's going to be for the Jewish nation when God is going to put an end to their sin. Number three, he's going to make reconciliation for iniquity, a uh, complete restoration between God and Israel after many years. You know, there's going to be a wonderful reconciliation uh, for the iniquities, the sins that separate us from their God. But God is going to remove those things. There's going to be that wonderful reconciliation, a full reconciliation of the relationship between God and Israel, those things that he has promised to do. Number four, he's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. Again, you can read this in verse 24, uh, which will uh, bring in the rule and reign of the Messiah. You know, God is going to set up his kingdom. Jesus is going to sit. The Messiah is going to sit on David's throne and he's going to rule over them with everlasting righteousness. They're going to want to know these wonderful blessings of Messiah reigning and their peace on earth. As well, of course, we'll speak much more more about the millennial kingdom reign as we go on into this. Uh, but this is just to touch on some of those things to give you a, a basic understanding, as I say. Number five, then, uh, to seal up the vision and the prophecy. To seal up the vision and the prophecy, and this is what it says in Jeremiah uh, chapter thirty-one and verse. 34 about that it says no more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for they all shall know me from the least to the greatest of them says the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and their sins I will remember no more what a beautiful day uh, that is going to be you know there's going to be no more need for visions and prophecies there's no going to be no more need for people to 
to teach you about God and say this is the way of the Lord. Because God says that in that day they're all going to know me. In that day they're going to know me from the least to the great. They're going to know him. And we're going to know him just as he knows us. And that, so it is for the Jewish nation as well and for the people of Israel. Uh, in the day, in that time when Jesus uh, comes and the millennial reign is set up and they enter into this blessing. This is the prophecy that Jeremiah is giving. In that time, actually, of, of captivity, in that time uh, where they're teaching one another and they're holding on to the prophecies and, and the prophets that are speaking and they're telling about God and they're telling the way of the Lord. In that time, as well, in, in Jeremiah's day, it was a day of desperation, but God is giving a glimpse to the prophets of a day which is coming. You know, there's going to be a time of struggle, there's going to be a time of woe, but guys, you need to know that God's blessings, all of those wonderful things that he has promised to you, he's going to bring those things uh, to pass and actually uh, in that time the, all the, the prophecies uh, and the visions are, are going to be sealed up they're going to be no more because you're going to know God uh, in uh, fullness what a day of blessing that will be and then number six and finally it talks about in that day there's going to be the anointing of the most holy it's going to be a time to anoint the most holy and in Ezekiel chapter 43 and verse Seven. This is what it says. Ezekiel chapter forty-three and verse seven. It says, "And he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, and I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. No more shall the house of Israel defile my holy name, uh, nor their kings, nor their holotry." or with the carcasses of the kings of their high places. So it's talking about God uh, making his dwelling place among the nation of Israel. Of course, God himself is going to sit upon the throne in the temple. The Shekinah glory is going to return to the temple. They're going to know the fullness of the glory of God in the temple again. Um, and uh, this is, again, is a wonderful thing because it's, uh, Ezekiel the prophet was the one that saw the glory departing uh, out of the temple. You know, God's uh, presence went out from amongst Israel and out of the temple and the glory of the Lord just uh, descended away. Uh, but in that day, the, the glory is going to fill the temple again. That The most holy is going to sit upon the throne of David. Jesus himself, their Messiah, is going to rule upon over them and it's going to be a wonderful, glorious day. Uh, so that we see that troublesome times are coming, uh, but that God is still working with his people. God is going to start the prophetic clock again. And we know from the signs of the times that Jesus gave in Matthew 24, some of them, those that we looked at it in brief uh, are coming to pass. In fact, we're, looking at it in, we're living in days and times uh, where these things are coming to pass so quickly, it's hard to keep up with the signs of the times. We know that these times are coming. Uh, we know that Jesus is going to have his uh, way and that God is going to uh, finish what he started with his people, Israel. And this time of prophetic fulfillment is going to bring in a great, great blessing uh, for his people and great, great blessing uh, for mankind and for all those that turn to God and trust upon his name. So what can we learn through this passage? We learn that God uh, says what he means. He means what he says, that he is true uh, to the letter. Uh, that God is at work among the nations, that God is at work uh, amongst his people, that God has a plan that he's bringing those things to, to pass, and that his ultimate plan is that the nations uh, would be saved, that you and I would be saved, that we would come to know him, that we would come to know the fullness of, this, of his blessing, the fullness of relationship that we can have in him, because this world is coming to an end, this age is coming to an end, and uh, God is going to wrap these things up for those that trust in him, uh, whether Jew or Gentile, uh, whoever would call upon the name of the Lord uh, will be saved. And God